Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Now, before we get into today's episode, I have decided to do another question of the day. And today's question is a nice, simple one. And that question is this, where are you from? And I don't mean like really specific, like, oh, well, I live on 327, you know, no, no, no. I just mean like country, or if you want to be more, slightly more specific, then go for it. But like, I just want to kind of build a map in my mind of where you guys are actually from. And um, as much as I can look at my YouTube, like, analytics or whatever i prefer to sort of like, i'd like to know about more about my sort of regular commenters and subs those kind of people and that's those are the guys that i'm really interested in obviously i value every single sub that is here but i really want to know more about the guys that are always watching the videos and that, that that's awesome so let me know where you're from in the comments i am obviously from england would you believe uh, though i am scottish so eh, it's kind of a half and half thing i don't sound it but you might notice sometimes i say certain things that sound a little bit weird because yeah that's why uh, i'm from essex I know I don't sound like that either, but, you know, it's just the way it is, the way I was brought up or whatever. So let's move on to today. Now, it's actually been a pretty decent month. I've We've had a bit of a poor run. Uh, we got the game against Ips, which was great. Our live comm in the last episode, admittedly, was a bit dull, and I apologise for that. The game against Fulham. But the point is we didn't concede any, and that was a great step up for the way things have been going for us lately. Um, we needed to get on another good run, like the one we had here that really moved us away from the relegation places. Our first game of the month, it started off so well. I've oh also one thing I just wanted to say is Jack Watmore has had an absolute corker of a month like probably the best month I've ever seen from him um he's been unreal against crew ah oh, I don't know how we lost this we shouldn't have lost this like Marcus put us in front on eight minutes which was great and Rory Donnelly equalized for crew which was irritating um eventually Joe Rawls put crew in front which just frustrated me to death and then adam lafondra made it 3-1 we did get one back very quickly from jack what uh from jack what from a corner but we just sort of tracked we battered them for the rest of the game 3-2 to us on clear cuts in this one particular uh, and we had more shots more shots on target just about everything really was us except for tackles one um and they were slightly better in the passing we were definitely better but couldn't take our chances guys um, i've taken it off of uh defending as our main training because i'm worrying that maybe we're concentrating too much on defending maybe we need to be a bit more balanced because maybe that's affecting our ability to finish our chances and it does seem to have had a little bit of an effect as you'll see later in the episode i'm not mm, still not entirely happy with it but it's definitely improving but you know we're looking we're still not getting battered by teams this is the thing we're having we're getting really close to games and just not quite doing it we've not i think we've only lost one maybe two games by more than a goal um we're looking at crystal palace and bournemouth by more than one goal and Watford beat us by more than one goal. That's literally it. We, we're generally, when we're winning, we're only winning, well, but we did beat Leeds and Brighton. So it's, we're doing all right. We're scoring plenty as well. Um, that's always good. In our next game, we had a crunch one, and that was against Peterborough, who are not much further up the league than we are. We had to make this count. Uh, as you can see, Watmore, again, with his second goal of the month, stepped in from a corner. With He's scoring a lot of goals from corners now. I'm really, really liking that. And made it 1-0. Then in the second half, uh, we were the better side again here. What Marcus made it 2-0, and that was great. Unfortunately, they got a goal back before I was able to change the tactics. And that happens quite a lot, and it's a pain in the ass. Like when you score a goal and you go 2 0 right, we need to go defending now. And then before you actually have a chance to make that change, they've already equalized. I don't like that. It's a pain in the ass, and it seems to happen quite a lot. Like you can't even do like a concentrate to tell them to just calm down after you've scored the goal. But I think we were valued for the win. Three all in clear cut chances this game. We actually went into a 3 0 lead on clear cuts in this game, and Peter really did start to come back. Um, but it wasn't enough. And after El Hajj Bar, uh, is that like El Hajj Juf and Demba Bar's love child? Who are you, sir? Awesome. He looks quite decent, actually. Uh, but he got himself sent off, which I think just helped us. We were able to then just to chill on the result and get the win, which was huge for us because we'd. Well, we've been all right lately, but I wanted to make sure that we got that one because teams below us like Brighton had started to win and I didn't want to slip too close to the relegation zone because we, despite being okay as of late, we were still not finding it that easy to get away from the relegation places. It was really strange. That little poor start really cost us a lot in terms of... Uh, really, like, if you look at our first games, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only won one of our first seven and I think that for me is what we've been kind of trying to recover from ever since then. In our next game, though, we had Wigan at home, and I really thought we could have. We were so close to winning this. Like, we didn't really deserve. I mean, it, a one all draw is pretty much about right for this game. Um, it was the fact that when Jeb Wallace put us in front, I thought, oh my God, we're going to do it. We're going to beat Wigan. And they were a good side in this league. But 
we just couldn't hang on. Our defensive strategy just could not hold out for long enough. I think it was one all. It was nil-nil on clear cut. So I guess, again, pretty much a fair result in this one. Just a shame. If we could have just held on a little bit longer, uh, we would have been able to grab the win. But Oriol Riera, who always seems to score against me, uh, he was scoring buttloads against me for uh, Wigan, for Wigan, of course, in who we signed for as well, there, in my Fulham save last year. Pain in the ass. But one of those things that happens. And we are... It gave us another, you know, it's another point. It's a point in the right direction against a good side. Then we went away to Wolves and a little bit disappointed in this one. Like, not in the sense that we deserved anything from this game because we weren't great. And if anything, I think we did quite well to get away with just the 1-0 defeat. But that's what I mean. Like, when we're losing, we're not losing by a lot. Ulysses Davida got the goal for Wolves. Uh, we didn't score today, though. But that was the only real chance of the game. And I think 1-0 is a pretty, a pretty fair result to be honest, in this game. We were very, very good um, at defending. We couldn't get a lot going forward. Wolves do have a very, very strong front line. And Jones made some good saves, I've got to say. But fact is, 1-0 is a shame. I, I thought we were going to hang on, but we didn't. We did have one decent chance towards the end. Didn't count as a clear cut, but it was a decent opportunity. I think it was Kieran Griffiths that had the opportunity, but it didn't quite go in. And in our last game, yeah, you're going to love this. Sheffield United, we played Sheffield United and we beat them 4-0. And that is not even the best thing about this game. Jack Watmore scored a fucking hat-trick. I'm not even kidding. That is, that's five goals he's got this month. I think he might even be our top goal scorer now. It's unreal. He put us in front from a corner on 26 minutes, which was spectacular. Great, and we're seeing a lot more of that, so I'm really going to try and emphasize that uh, with our corner instructions. For some reason... Um... <laughs> We just seem to continue. Like, we got a penalty on 35 minutes, which Watmore, of course, converted to make it 2-0. I thought, right, we're doing well here. And Wednesday, not Wednesday, Sheffield United were poor. Let, let's not make any mistake. I think it was 4-1 to us. Yeah. So we actually did put away our clear-cut chances. And I think that might have been because of my slight change in the training regimes. Like, we are actually starting to put away our chances now. And, of course, admittedly, two of these chances were penalties. But nonetheless, we still had to put them in the... He still had to put them in the onion bag, and he did. Wallace made it 3-0, which just was gorgeous. And then a, le a late sort of 88th minute, I think, yeah, penalty from Jack Watmore was enough to make the game 4-0 uh, to us and a hat-trick for him. So that is superb. He does have only 12 headings, so jumping reach isn't superb either. So it's interesting that he's able to score so many goals from headers, but he has so far. And obviously his penalty taking has been superb for us. Um, I'm just going to quickly go into our tactics and have a little look at the set piece instructions just to see if we do have webster set not webster what more set to do exactly what i want him to which is to run that near post so what more near post flick on uh i'm going to say attack near post rather than a flick on as such because he, he seems to be doing better with yeah that, that's probably about right uh defending corners this is what i've been using and it's it's doing all right is the best thing I can say about it. Um, right, let's get into the match preview for today. Actually, you know what? We're going to have to look at the squad. Of course we are. Most appearances for us this year is Wallace and Watmore with 24 each. Top goal scorers, Jack fucking Watmore is our top goal scorer with eight goals from centre-back. That's unreal. I know he's taken penalties, but even so, brilliant. Um, assists, Jack Wallace has now got nine, so that's awesome as well. Uh player of the match Watmore of course is now top of the player of the matches with three he is having an, an unbelievable season pass rating Sam Mantum's injured at the moment which is not good uh Ryan Smith is also injured which is not good and Aker is injured we've got quite a few injuries actually um Ryan Smith picked up a twisted ankle I think uh, I decided to start him for a game because I figured why not he scored four goals in an under 21 game so I figured I'd give him a go got injured in the first minute <laughs> and he's out for a while now um Masonda's nearly back to full fitness which is good Mantum is not quite back yet. Yellow cards. Mantum has also got five, which is fine. Red cards, none at all, which is awesome. Average rating, Jack Watmore with a 7.12. But Paul Jones is having a decent season. I've got to say, he's actually starting to make some decent saves. When you look at the amount of goals that he's conceded in the games he started compared to Alex Bass, it is just completely night and day. So let's get into the... Uh, the oh, Aker's injured, so we're going to have to bring in Raheem Handley, I assume. Holland's and close in the midfield. Anyone else I'd rather have to start? Marcus up front. He's not been as good this year, um, but I am still giving him a new contract. We've got a few players that need to sign some new contracts. I'm not giving Eccleston a new contract because he's on like two grand a week and he wants like six. 
and that's insane. He's barely playing. He's not worth six grand a week for me. Uh, we can get someone better for that money. So he will not be getting a new contract with us. Rest assured of that, guys. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Griffiths has been awesome. McAvoy's been superb. Wallace. What more Webster Maloney? Hanley is my sort of first choice. Jones has been great lately too. So yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that one. We're away from home, but this tactic seems to work home and away, to be honest. Um, at home, it obviously has more of an effect, but away, it still seems to provide a decent outlet and allows us to not be caught too high up the pitch. As you can see, we are... I mean, look how tight this is here. There's five teams tied on 27 points, and there's a couple... There's one on 28 and 29. So in theory, we could jump all the way up here with a win. We are three points clear of the relegation zone at the moment. Uh, who are Brighton playing? They're playing Huddersfield, so that is a top... That is a top clash and we're playing Bradford remember who are actually now below us in the league despite beating us at Fratton Park early in the season so I'm hoping we can come up here and beat them at Valley Parade I assume that's where they're still playing uh we'll just have to see they've got Jose Font and Alex Baptiste is that James Perch I thought he was a fullback sorry I could have sworn James Perch was like a hmm, never mind Let's get straight into this. Opposition instructions obviously Sylvan Anderson has been dealing with it, and I think that's been helping us as well um However, I've got to stop relying on him for this. There's a He's not good at man management, so I need to make sure I click for a different assistant to pick whatever team talk, because it's just quicker than choosing it myself, because usually they choose the same kind of thing anyway. It means we can get into games quicker, right? That's good. As you can see here, look, Paul Jones has conceded 12 goals in the 10 appearances he's made, which is pretty damn good. Alex Bass conceded 25 in the 14 he's made. It's an obvious... You know, Jones is having a good year. Um, so I'm thinking maybe a new contract because he is actually doing a good job. Right, let's see what we can come up with here at Valley Parade. I really want to see us win here. Getting an away win would be a massive result because we've been great at home lately. But away from home, we've still been dropping the points and losing most games. So I'd like to see us step up tonight. And hey, maybe Jack Watmore will be a hero for us and get his sixth goal of the month. He's certainly got, he's got to be player of the month for me. For us and for the entire league. For a centre-back to score five goals in four appearances is unreal. Uh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, that's not what I'm doing at all. What? No, no. Oh, bugger it. Okay, well, they're doing okay. We're doing okay. It looks like another one of these sort of really stale ones. Right, here's Fothering with a long ball up. That's going to go straight into us, isn't it? And it's flicked on to Webster, who brings it down. Maloney. He's got men in the midfield awaiting the pass. Into Danny Hollands. Back to Ben Close and out to Maloney again. He's going to have to do a little bit better than that. Into Danny Hollands. Maybe there's a runner to be made. Griffiths is usually a bit better at picking these types of passes. And he has done that's poor. But it's going to come back to him and back to Maloney. Pompey are doing a little bit better at keeping the ball. Um, up to Jed Wallace. Jed Wallace can have a little run at people maybe. No, it drops it back into the midfield to Ben Close. We're slowly edging our way forward, sort of as a group rather, almost like a swarm. Hollands, Griffiths, whips it in behind and McAvoy's in here and it's 1-0 to Portsmouth here at Valley Parade. Bradford City nil, Portsmouth 1. McAvoy's been superb this year as well. Our goals have been coming from weird areas of the pitch, but I'm happy to let that happen. That was really nice actually, some really good patient build-up. Like, despite the fact that we are set to sort of play... Um, a more direct passing style. Today, we kept the ball nice and tight. Griffiths with a lovely ball through. But McAvoy still had to finish this. Good first touch and smashes it near post. Griffiths with another assist for the lad and McAvoy with another goal. Well, that's good. I'll take it. 1-0 to Portsmouth at Valley Parade. Ball knocked up here for Bradford. And, oh, I thought Wallace was going to win that here, but it looks like they're going to counter on us. I thought it was going to be our chance, but it looks like it's going to be Bradford's opportunity here. Martin, just watch that guy running in at the left-hand side. All the way across, and Ashton, and it's going to come, and that's surely a goal for breach. And well done, Paul Jones, again. He, Although he should save that, it's great to see that he is actually making the saves. And this is my point. Like, he's not batting them back, he's getting them out of play where they need to be. And it's still 1-0 to Pompey. If we can get in at half-time here, 1-0 up, I'll be very, very pleased, because I'll feel like it's at least going to be good enough for a draw. Don't foul him. Good stuff. Well done, Brendan Maloney. Ball up to Marcus, and he's got Griffiths running off of him, I think. And he's got a man out on the right-hand side, if he can find him. Close. Oh, it's poor. Really poor, poor ball from Glenn, uh, Glenn Close. I can't stop calling him that. I'm just going to go with it. Hopefully, we can get in a half-time. And Brighton are two goals to the good against Huddersfield. So that means the pressure is basically on us, because we're not going to be any further away from the relegation zone if we win this. In fact, I believe if we lose this... We could actually end up, well, we wouldn't end up in it because our goal difference is way better, but we'll be out only on goal difference despite doing a really good job at the moment. So, I'm going to just make sure that we tell them to concentrate because we are only a goal up here and we cannot afford to get complacent in this game. This is of the utmost importance. If we can win away from home here, that would be superb. An away win to cap off this month would be perfect. I think this is, like, I think we're going to stay up this season. Um, this tactic is going to win us enough points 
and score us enough goals to enable us to stay up. Bradford have had a lot of shots, but not from anywhere of real importance. And that is quite okay by me. Where is the ball? I, I can't see the ball. All right, here we go. <laughs> Buddy offside thing getting in the way of the actual play. It's Griffiths again here, taking it round one man. Can he keep hold of it? Or maybe... no. Oh. He does tend to dwell, right? You better get there first. Just don't overdo it. Just knock it into the uh, left side of midfield. Or is that the fullback? Oh, what? Come on. Don't have to do long ball all the time. Knocked on there and Marcus isn't going to get there. He is going to get there. Kieran Griffiths round the goalkeeper. What? Oh, what a chance for Portsmouth that was. Kieran Griffiths very, very nearly made that 2-0 here. And that is a good opportunity, which maybe he should have done better with. It's not really his type of game. He's not really that type of goal scorer, but it would have been good if he'd scored it. Uh-oh. Win the header, well done. McAvoy win the follow-up, uh-oh. And it's, is that David? Oh, it is David Nugent. Out to probably Callum Wilson. I don't know which Wilson. There's a lot of Wilsons. Good block from the fullback. Bradford looked decent, but we are winning the game, and that is massive for us. And it's about time we made some substitutions, I think. They've had an injury, which is, with all due respect, good, because it keeps us in this. Right, so what we got in terms of bench? I'm going to bring on Eccleston, because we need a striker. Oh, my God, Brendan Maloney is looking absolutely knackered. Who have we even got that can play at right side? Webster can play right side, can't he? So we'll put Webster across to right back. Um, he's not great there, but it will have to do. And that means Dominic Hyam can come on for Brendan Maloney. He just looks absolutely knackered. Hanley's not had a great game either, but I'm not really sure if we should risk bringing on Stanis Baratheon at a time like this, basically. So we're going to just go again. I'm going to say concentrate again once we've got... Yeah. There we go. I'm just going to keep telling him to concentrate, basically. I don't want to switch to our defensive tactic just yet because that'll end up costing us, as it has done in the previous games. Oh, come on, guys. I mean, in a way, draw isn't an awful result. It's just in a game like this where we've actually done quite well and had a couple of good chances, I would hate to see us not win it, you know? Right, get there first. Eccleston's done well there. Can he knock it behind? Griffiths is in. Oh, come on. Right, played wide. Oh, Griffiths can play him in here. He does play him in here. Nathan Eccleston with a chance. Knocks it across. Oh, and... Oh, he's in! Bradford City 1, Pawn, Pawn P2. No, Bradford City nil, Pawn P2. That was some interesting play from Nathan Eccleston. I genuinely thought he was going to strike that. Well done for not doing it. Griffiths with a lovely ball through. Uh, great vision from Eccleston to find Wallace. A bit behind it, but Wallace with the strike. And, oh, dear. Bradford City keeper should have done much better with that. Now then, let's just... Uh, I'm going to wait till sort of 80 to go to the defensive style. Maybe. I don't know. They're going to have to throw everything at us now. Oh, come on. If we can win here. Maybe we'll wait till sort of 75. Like, maybe around about now. Although we did take off... Do we even have Acre? Is Danny Hollands on the pitch? Right, he is. That's fine. We're going to just switch to our more defensive shape. Luckily, Hollands is on and he can just drop straight back in. So that should be good for us now. I'm, I'm thinking that as long as we can avoid... I want to just test our defensive capabilities, basically. We're two goals up in a game. Let's see if we can keep a clean sheet. That's my main aim for this game now. See if we can keep a clean sheet. That's poor. Oh, it's flicked on here. Eccleston's through. He's going to lose it. Yeah. Um, not bad. Not bad. Just be careful. Just be careful. And that, again, is poor from Bristol. So just... No, come on. There's two of you. There is two of you there. That's a goal for David Nugent. And it's 2-1 here at Valley Parade. Come on. There's... Oh, what were they doing? We deserve to win this game. We've had the best chance of it. Why did they both go for that ball here? And Ashton gets it. And once it's, well, once it's there, Nugent is completely unmarked. And it's a big header from him. Nothing Paul Jones can do about that. You dare not. Oh, right. Concentrate. Concentrate on the hell out of this game. We cannot not win this now. With two goals to the good. Away from home. Oh, come on. This had better not be a two all. I swear to God. We've been way too good in front of the goal. All right, we've. Oh, Eccleston here. Space! Ah, oh, it's at the post. And that is the highlight, I think. It must be because it hits the post. And apparently post and bar, they always give you a key highlight, don't they? I find. Uh, close here. Bradford City don't seem to be pushed out too far. Three minutes to go. Come on. I think we've done it, guys. Um, I know he's picked up a knock, but really? There we go. Bradford City won. Pompey 2. That is a massive win for us. And a thoroughly deserved one. Like, we created a lot of good chances in that game. And I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, let's just... I generally ask Mark Kelly. Well, Kelly, mate, you're wrong. There we go. Have a bit of... Oh, okay, most of them didn't care. But those of them who did. Kenneth McAvoy and Jed Wallace with the goals for us. Yeah, I think we were valid for that one. We got the better chance. 
Um, we put it away, I believe. No, we didn't actually, did we? Because it was Kira Griffiths that missed that chance. But what all this does for us now is it moves us up to 15th in the league. Still only three points clear of the relegation zone, but there is now a lot of teams between us and it, and that is key for us. We're now sort of three points away from getting top half. Everything is looking a little bit brighter for us now. Starting to win a few games, which is what we needed to do anyway. Um, so there we go, guys. Things are starting to look up for us. We've got a championship match in like two days against Sheffield Wednesday. So we're going to be knackered for that. But we are at home. So you never know. Maybe we could win that one as well. It's just we'll have to see how things go. I think that's been a thoroughly productive month. Just the one defeat, was it? I think we only lost one game this month. Ooh. Oh, no, there was the crew game at the start. But the fact is... 10 points from those six games is good stuff. That's what we needed to have. Um, I basically said to myself, I think I said this on camera, in fact, I wanted a point per game plus like four or five points. So now we've got 30 points from 24 games. That's survive. If we can carry on this form for the second half of the season, we will stay up. And that is good. We need to consolidate so we can build for next year, get some of these youngsters firing. Um, I want to bring through Dodd and Nichols a little bit more later in the season and maybe next year. Really, really excited for the way things are going now. Pompey are finally starting to find their feet at this level. That is what we needed to do. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on this episode. And if you've liked it even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and St. Pauli in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And answer the question that I asked you at the start of this episode in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next episode where our live com game will be against... West Bromwich Albion again. <laughs> Just one of those things, guys. And I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.